Hello and welcome to G Max Studios. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the various sensor sizes that are available on different cameras and how they affect our photography. For everything in the world, there is a set standard, and in photography, this standard has been set as the 35 mm film format, which means that. the standard that you take in photography is equivalent to the 35 mm negative that used to exist not that there weren't other formats there were formats like medium format and large format but still the 35 mm was considered to be a standard since it was such a popular medium so in modern terminology any sensor that equals the negative of a 35 mm film which is 36 mm by 24 mm is considered to be a full frame sensor full frame sensors came pretty late to the digital scene because the technology to manufacture such big sensors just did not exist so before full frame sensors came into being sensors were made in a format which was known as the APS format and this format was roughly one and a half times smaller than the size of a full frame sensor APS-C sensors which stands for advanced photo system classic are approximately 24 mm by 15 mm in size and are roughly one and a half times smaller than a full frame sensors usually put in your point and shoot cameras are even smaller and the ones in the mobile phones can barely be seen of course there are sensors larger than 35 mm still being made today which are called medium format sensors companies like phase 1 hasselblad and fuji specialize in making these kind of sensors now the question is how does sensor size affect our photographs before we get into how sensor sizes affects our photographs let us understand what is an image circle the image that the lens projects onto the sensor is called the image circle So the first thing that gets affected by different sensor sizes is the focal length of the lens that you are using. Since most lenses were made according to the 35 mm full frame sensor size, if your camera is a full frame sensor size, there is obviously no change. But if you are using a camera with a smaller sensor, it is able to capture only a portion of the entire image circle therefore seeming as if the image has been zoomed in this effect is called crop factor or focal length multiplier now since an aps-c crop sensor is about 1.5 times smaller than the full frame sensor the zoom or the crop in the focal length is also 1.5 times So for example if you use a 50 mm lens on a crop sensor uh, like an APS-C it would become a 75 mm lens similarly if you were to use a 100 mm lens it would become a 150 mm lens Similarly Olympus and Panasonic developed a sensor size of their own which was approximately half the size of a full frame sensor and they called it a micro 4/3 sensor now the focal length multiplier of this sensor is two times that of a full frame sensor so if you put on a 50 mm lens on this uh, sensor it would become a 100 mm
So to avoid all this confusion, most lens manufacturers along with the format of their lenses, they write a 35mm equivalent focal length alongside the written focal length on the lens. Terminology wise, Nikon calls their full frame cameras FX and their crop sensor cameras DX. Similarly, Canon's full frame cameras are EF and the crop sensor uh, are called EFS. And Sony had developed an A mount earlier, which still exists but is not very popular. Uh, but they developed an E mount with their NEX series and now the full frame uh, mount, full frame sensor is called the FE mount. Since crop sensors are cheaper to produce, obviously the cameras which have crop sensors are obviously cheaper in price. But that does not mean that they are not good. In fact, a lot of photographers use this crop factor to their advantage. A lot of photographers use crop sensor bodies deliberately to increase the reach of their lenses because if you put on a 300mm lens on a crop sensor body, it would become a 450mm lens thereby increasing your reach and enabling you to get closer to your subject. A thing to remember that sensor size is not everything in a camera. The color science as well as the camera processor has a very important part to play in how your final photograph looks. Now, traditionally, uh, it is thought that higher megapixels are better. But while higher megapixels give you more resolution and detail in a photograph, they also cause an increase in noise, especially at higher ISOs. This is the reason why Nikon's top end D5 has got just 20 megapixels and uh, Sony A7S2 which is supposed to be the low light king has just got 12 megapixels. Now if you cram these higher megapixels into even smaller sensors the inherent danger of producing noise becomes even more. Sensor size also affects the depth of field, apart from the aperture, of course, as you must have seen in episode 7. So, for example, if you put a 50mm 1.4 lens on a micro four thirds camera, your focal length would be equivalent to a 100mm. But the depth of field would also double, therefore, it would become closer to a 100mm 2.8 lens rather than a 100mm 1.4 lens. So technically if we keep the same frame, we will see that the smaller sensors produces a deeper depth of field and for this very same reason when you take pictures with mobile phones, everything seems to be in focus. It is not because of anything else but due to a very very small sensor. There is a lot more to sensors but we shall talk about the advanced stuff at a later stage. Till then share this video with your friends, subscribe to this channel and follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Until the next video, take care.